I'm Dee Linston with the Tech and Training Team. And I'm Trey Harrison with Bona Adhesives. And today we're going to cover the Bona Trifecta in Adhesives. And what we're going to try to do is really simplify your choice when it comes to adhesives. There's a lot of different products out there to choose from. And our goal is just to really show you how you can simplify those choices with uh, Bona Adhesives. There's about 99% of the jobs out there, you know, we have what you'll need in terms of a glue down uh, product. For the 1% of floors out there that you may not know exactly what you should be using, that may be a floor that you may want to walk away from. So Trey, for contractors that are stuck in their ways and when they do, you know, kind of used to, you know, they grow up using a certain adhesive, what's kind of been the feedback when you talk about silane-based adhesives? You know, when you say stuck in their ways, it's kind of it's kind of funny when you talk to guys asking about about what they've been using before. And a lot of times they don't know why. They were, that's what they learned as they were growing up in the business, or that's what they were taught by their father and their grandfather, whatever. So when you really get, when you really show them the reason behind why we use, do this stuff and what the benefits are of the, of the bonus silene based adhesives, then they can see the value. And that's when they can really, the light kind of comes on and they say, this is the adhesive that I'm going to use going forward. Mm, good point. Bobby, uh, growing up in the business down in the southeast in, floors, uh, in Florida, tell us about some of, the, uh, you know, some of the old ways or some of the old products that guys are using down in that area. Yeah, we used a lot of urethane adhesives uh, in Florida. Um, and uh, just as uh, all the problems that they do have, uh, staining your hands, etching the finishes, uh, there's a lot of pain points with those. So when we uh, started using some of the uh, silane based adhesives. I mean, it was it was so nice to be able to spread that adhesive on the floor versus beating you up. So it's a it really was a big game changer product for us. So thanks, Bobby. Hey, Trey, uh, tell us about you know sand and finish schools. You know, um, you know what's been the feedback from some of the contractors when you start talking about you know minimizing how much top nailing they have to do, um, how easy it is to clean off of pre-finished floors. What's kind of some of the feedback you're getting from contractors? You know, that's some of the some of the things that really resonate with these guys. When you when you say, hey, using like the Bona 850T sausages can pretty much eliminate your top nailing, or that works great for repair jobs, or you know, starter rows, closeout rows, any any of that kind of stuff, really shows them the value of this. Now I can I can put this into my business. I can have a stronger grab than maybe even the nails that I was putting in on these on these parts on these boards that they really need the extra the extra hold and the extra strength. So for the the schools, those those are the kind of things that guys love. That and the cleanability is is something that that they really really hold on to. Good point. Hey Trey, tell us, uh, you know, what's the biggest reasons that will cause a contractor to want to turn uh, to change over to the bone adhesive system? You know, there's a couple things. One of the biggest ones that is kind of, uh, you know, an underlying factor that a lot of guys don't realize is the save on waste. Waste, if you know, you know with the urethane adhesive, as soon as that lid comes off, that puck starts to form around the top. You know, that's all unusable material that you have to throw away. It's just money going down the drain. With ours, you get about a 99.9% .9 yield on, on those buckets. We don't have a lot of waste. Um, the other thing, and then, you know, that adds up to a lot of money in, in the end. The other thing is, as we, as we talked about, the cleanability. When you get it on top of a pre-finished floor, it doesn't etch, it doesn't halo, it doesn't have the ability to adhere to plastic. So when you scrape it up and you clean it off, you don't have to do board replacements or repair work later on, stuff like that. You know, this day and age, there's a, it's tough to get labor. It's tough to get good labor. And usually that means that your best guy has to go do your repairs or your, or your board replacements, and you can't really afford to have that happen in, you know, in this day and age. So, and you know, the last thing, it is a true all-in-one. We're gonna give you a tenacious hold, one of the strongest, one of the strongest holds in all of adhesives. It is incredibly easy to clean up, there's a sound rating in there and all that with moisture protection built in. So a true all-in-one adhesive that is going to be, it's going to be the perfect scenario for most contractors. It's always good to hear the testimonies when guys finally start using bone adhesives and you know how much of a, a savings as you mentioned it is for them and the ease of use. So um, I appreciate that information. Hey, thanks Bobby and Trey for uh, the conversation and, and all your feedback and experience. Now we're going to move right into the uh, demonstrations. Mm -hmm. 
So for this demo, we're going to talk about the R540. R540 is the bonus mitigation system that's a single component product that can go over concrete, plywood, or Advantech. Now, this product is like no other on the marketplace because it's a one coat system on the, over concrete and it'll cover you up to 20% moisture content in the plywood. So, where I think that really hits home and where that's really in, an important story to tell is, is the scenario that pops up a lot. Let's say you get your wood delivered. You're, you know, you're ready to install. You've got everybody scheduled out. This is your install date. Wood's been in there, acclimated for two weeks. Everything's looking perfect. You get to the job site, stick your pin meter in your wood. We're in Colorado, let's say it's at 6%. Looks good. Stick your pin meter in your plywood, it's at 15%. Now you got a real problem, right? You have two solutions and none of them are good. You can say, you know, cross your fingers, hope for the best, go ahead and install that floor, knowing that you're, with, you're outside of that 2% or 4% variance between the, the substrate and the wood. Or you can do the proper way, which is the NW, what the NWFA standards say, is you wait. Wait for that plywood to dry so, now you, so it comes down to where you are back into equilibrium with the substrate and the wood floor. Like I said, we're in Denver, Colorado. For it to drop, you know, 8%, that's, you know, it could be two weeks, something like that. So now everything's screwed up. Your schedule's screwed up. The painters who are come, supposed to come in behind you, you know, drywall, all these different, all these different situa scenarios, now, you, now you've, you've messed everybody's schedules up. So now we have something that can take care of that. You can roll on one coat of the R540, and that's going to cover you up to 20% moisture content. Now, when you do that, that no longer, you no longer need to be within the 2 or 4% range because that 540 is going to seal off that plywood enough so that it will, it'll let the, it does have a perm rating, so it'll let some of the moisture evaporate, but at a slow enough rate that it's not going to affect any of your, any of your wood flooring. So Bob's going to put down a little bit of the 540. We're going to show you the best rolling techniques. We don't, we don't require you to use a paint tray or a bucket, but as soon as you, if you do pour it out on the floor, just understand that you're going to start to lose some of your, your spread rates because it's going to start soaking in immediately. So best practices is to put it in a paint tray or a five gallon poly bucket, anything like that, and roll out of there. Now, the roller we want you to use is either, you know, a quarter inch or a 3 16 inch nap. Uh, mohair is the best. It is a one and done type roller, so you don't want to spend a ton of money and get the you know, top of the line because you are going to throw it away as soon as you're done with it. Um, spread rates 400, 600 square feet per gallon, per jug. I'm sorry, it's a five liter jug, so about 400 to 600 square feet, depending on what you're going over. One of the best parts about it is it's also a primer for Advantech. You see, we have a plywood, we have a plywood board here and an Advantech board. Why that's so important is with most adhesives, if you're going to glue down over Advantech, you have to abrade it first. That's just more time. Time is money. With this, you can roll one coat over it, and you, you're primed for the Advantech is now primed. Um, like I said, we don't, we don't have any rules about you have to cross, you have to go cross grain, anything like that. Now, best practices is to make sure that you're getting full coverage is to go cross grain. What I like to do, what Bob's gonna do here, is we're gonna go down one way, cover, cover it all up, and then we're gonna go across the side. Another, another amazing uh, point on this product is we snapped a couple chalk lines here. Product will go down clear. It goes down, looks like the floor is just wet, as you'll see. But we can go right over those chalk lines. Now those are set in place, and you don't have to worry about uh, redoing those later. They'll, they'll be set there so you can lay your floor using those. As you can see, it just gives it kind of a nice wet look. So two things on this dry time. One of the things about dry time is if you're going to nail down, we're just looking for dry to the touch. Usually takes about an hour to two hours. Like uh, as as the rest of our like the rest of our adhesives, it does have an R in front of it. The more moisture in the air, the faster it does dry. So if you are in a more of a humid area, it might, it might dry a little quicker. But for a straight nail down installation, it's, it's about an hour to two. For, if you're gonna do a glue down, nail glue assist, or a full trial glue down, we want you to wait overnight and start gluing the next morning. S 
So as you can see, he's going, he's making sure everything gets covered, nice and covered. It's, it's a real easy, you can move fast. Your labor cost isn't gonna be really high on something like this because you can go so fast and, uh, and it's pretty foolproof. So as I said, best practices is after you go one way, go back across it the other way just to make sure you didn't miss any spots or any low little low areas. Sometimes these knots will have a little bit of a low area and if you go one way you don't get it, that, you don't get it to disperse fully inside of those. Just to make sure that you get the whole floor covered. Similar to if you're rolling finish or rolling anything else out, you want to just kind of set your room up for you know, however many square feet you're trying to get. If it's, if you're on the 400 square feet side and you've got a thousand square feet to do, it's two and a half jugs. You just kind of, you kind of plan it out that way. Now, the, the only real things that you can get in trouble with on this product is if you put it down too thick. If you put it down too thick, it will bubble up. And anywhere that one of those bubble bre bubbles break, your moisture barrier has been compromised. You have an open spot. So you'll notice it. It's very, it's, it's really easy to notice. So it's just something to keep an eye out for. This is perfect. You want it to be a nice, thin, continuous layer. So he's gonna put it down on Advantech. Now Advantech, obviously, if you don't, if you don't see a lot of Advantech, it's, a, it's kind of a treated OSB that's, that's got a, uh, it's got kind of a wax film on it. Now it has, it's a really, really nice product. They've, they've done a really good job on it, but you don't usually have a lot of moisture concerns with it. The issues that, that people run into is that the, the glues won't bond well because of the, the coating that's on there. So that's why most, most man, manufacturers recommend you abrading it first so that the glue will have something to grab to, the adhesives. The same tactic with this. You're seeing a lot of Vantech now in higher end homes. Um, some, some, some higher end high rises, things like that are, are going to the Vantech. So like I was saying, with most adhesive manufacturers require you to abrade it, this five, the R540 is a primer. So it does not, so it means you do not have to abrade this after, before or after. It'll save you time and give you that, that other, another layer of protection. And when, we, when, you, when you are on a job site to get into the corners, we do use the roller. Go right, we can go right up next to the base. You know, I would take down, make sure all the base and shoe is taken down because when it does get on a painted surface, it's not real easy to take off. But you can roll right up into the corners, you know, make your, and because you don't have to go with the grain or anything like that, you go any direction you can get it done really easy in the corners. If you do have some kind of weird angles, you could get a foam paintbrush or a paintbrush or anything and just paint in those, in those tight, hard to reach areas. So now both of these boards are now sealed up 20% they can take up to 20% moisture content in them and still, and still be fine for your wood floor installation over the top. When we talk about doing a concrete installation, like I said, it's, this is a standalone product because we only need one coat of the 540 and then if you, in conjunction with the 851 uh, adhesive, we'll get you up to 18 pounds on a calcium chloride test or 95% on a relative humidity test worth of, worth of protection. So Bob's gonna roll this out on this hardy backer. Um, same, same spread rates. One of the things we do like to talk about is when you go, when you're going over concrete, compared to going over a wood substrate, 
Concrete, you cannot put too much down. You can put two coats, three coats, 10 coats, not gonna be too much because we're trying to force the moisture out from the concrete. When you talk about going over an OSB or a plywood, we, we wanna make sure that you limit it to one coat because we still want it to have a perm rating. We still want it to be able to breathe and off gas whatever moisture comes in there. Because if you seal that up, if you put two coats or something on a plywood or an OSB substrate, now you've completely sealed that wood off and the moisture is not gonna be able to jump from sheet to sheet and it can sit in there and it can rot from the inside out. Concrete, not that, don't have that issue. And Bob's doing a great job. Just one nice even layer all the way across. It's gonna, when it dries, it's gonna dry like a really hard plastic sheet across the top. So there's no, it's not tacky at all. So it's real easy to rack wood out. You don't need to, to, to deal with any of that stuff. Um, one of the things is, is that, and not just, not just us at Bona, people across the industry believe that these type of moisture barriers are gonna replace the 15 pound roofing felts and the different papers that are out there because this gives you a true congruent moisture mitigation system as opposed to those papers and stuff that don't that do some some moisture blocking but not very much so just to sum back up the r540 now it's a single component roll-on product that can cover you up to 20 percent moisture content in a wooden substrate or it can cover you up to 18 pounds on a calcium chloride test and 95 percent on a relative humidity test over concrete now let's go to the 851. So one of the best, the best properties of the A51 is, like we said, this tenacious, tenacious hold. So with a shear strength of over, over 340 PSI, that's going to really give you the confidence that no matter what substrate you put this down on, it's going to hold. Now Bob's going to show us, he's going to, this was put down about 24 hours ago, yesterday morning, and he's going to show you how, how well it's held down right now with a hammer test. Go ahead. Let's do it. As you can see, that's a lot of that's a lot of hammering. So we see how we see how it did on the plywood. Now let's see how it does with when you're glued to concrete. Here. <laughs> That's good. I don't think that one's coming. <laughs> no. So, good little demonstration on the sheer strength of the RE51. All right, let's talk a little bit about Bona R851. Now, all the Bona adhesives are silane based adhesives. What is a silane? Silane is a derivative of silicone. So much like you put around your bathtub or your sink, it's a moisture rejector and an adhesive promoter. So all of our, which, which is great for you because with that, it gets you ex extended spread rates as well. So more glue can cover more, saves you money. This is our bucket 851, comes in a three gallon pail. Um, every bucket comes with a foil liner. Brand new bucket here. So when we open it up, as you can see right on the top, first thing you notice, two trowels, two clip-on trowels. These trowels are the 1250G trowel and the MBP trowel. Now we're gonna get into the difference in those in a little bit when we talk about moisture protection. So 
We do offer moisture protection. Best part about this adhesive is, is we have one bucket. This is the only adhesive we offer. Different trials depending on how much moisture protection you need, okay? So what this foil liner does is, as we talked about before, one of the great things about it is the zero waste. So what this foil liner does is it, it's gonna, as long as you are gonna use this bucket again, you put the foil liner on and it's gonna save, you're gonna get maximum yield out of this. For instance, this bucket right here. We opened this bucket yesterday and left the lid off overnight. Now, if you've ever used a urethane, you know that that bucket is probably trash. With a silane-based adhesive, it's not the case. I'll peel off this. And as you see, even though it sat overnight, this little rim right here is the only thing that's gonna be unusable. Everything else in here, still usable. We're actually, when we trial this out, we're gonna use this bucket in just a minute, okay? One of the great things about the, the silane-based adhesives and the, and the 851 especially is its, its ability, its elasticity. If you can see, this is just a trial that we put out, a trial line we put out and pulled it back up. You can see it stretches. So it's gonna move with the natural movement of, of the wood. When the wood, when, you know, in high humidity and that wood expands and everything moves, the adhesive, your, you can know that your adhesive is gonna move with it and then it's gonna come back when it dries back out and it's time to put it, and it's time to close back up. On this one, you can see just that this is, this is just a little bit of adhesive between two, two pieces of wood and you can see the back and forth movement on this and it's, it just keeps coming right back to where it's supposed to go. So that's a big deal when you talk about other adhesives that don't have that kind of elasticity, that's where you can, you can run into problems with your installation. Down here, one of the biggest sa time savers, money savers, everything, is its ability to clean off pre-finished floors. If you've ever had a, seen a job that has a bunch of adhesive spots on it, you know that's a real expensive problem to have. The 851, this was put on yesterday, or put on, sorry, this was put on 72 hours ago and something like that with the urethane would normally be a nightmare. So Bob right now is gonna, he's gonna clean this off and show you how easy it is. Just a plastic putty knife. You know, that's a lot of adhesive on there. So to scrape that off that easy, that's really nice. Now, there's two ways to do, after you get a, the, the majority of it scraped off, you can do it two different ways. You can either do uh, just a microfiber. You take a microfiber and just kind of buff it out and it'll take care of all that. Um, if you have oiled floors, things like that, that's, a, that's the best method for, for doing that. Or you can, take a, you can put a little mineral spirits on a rag and, and do it that way if you'd like, if that's, if that's easier. Sometimes guys don't want to put, put another chemical on the floor, so even, even as balanced as uh, mineral spirits are, that, kind of, that can kind of buff it off as well. So either one of those is perfect for, to clean it off. Now, if you get it on there when it's wet, you know, not a big deal. We can clean it off when it's wet as well. And that, you can just, you know, just take a towel, buff it right off. Comes off with ease. So the cleanability is a huge, huge deal. Um, because if, as you know, if you do have a urethane spot on there and you miss it, chances are you got to go back and do some kind of a repair or some kind of a board replacement. All right, so when we talk about spread rates, we want to make sure that you guys are getting maximum amount of spread rates or maximum amount of adhesive for what you need. When uh, Bob's going to show us right now, when with urethanes, a lot of times you want them to, you know, you want, you need to get 100% coverage and you hold the trial a little bit different. So we're going to put some the 851 out. So when you're doing, when you when you spread a urethane out, you spread it out. You want you get 100% coverage. You hold it at about a 45 degree angle, and you spread it like that. For us, that's not how that's not how we want you to spread it. Okay, what we want is we want you to hold it at a 90 degree angle, and get these nice high ridges. See how those the ridge stability really stands up high. Now in the same amount of square footage with the urethane this is how much excess, excess adhesive you have. With ours, you're gonna, get you're gonna get better spread rates, you're gonna get more use out of the buckets 
in turn saving you money. This is what we want for a warranty. This is what we're looking for in your ridge stability and your ridge height. So the more you can get out of it, the better. Now, if you do it, if you float it and leave too much there, it's not a bad thing. It's not good for your, your wallet though. You just, it's just a waste of money. So when we talk about trowel selection, trowel selection is all based on what kind of moisture protection you need. Moisture protection is, you know, we measure it in two ways. We do not offer an unlimited moisture protection. That's, that's something that other companies might offer, but we don't. Some of the caveats about that that you gotta understand are, you have to have 100% coverage. No matter what company makes it, that's one of the things is they have to have 100% coverage. The reason that can be an issue is, is very, very rarely do we get good conditions to install floors in. Bad subfloors, things like that will throw you off. If you're not within 3 16 over a 10 foot span on your, on your subfloor, it's not considered a flat subfloor. That's the kind of stuff that can, can affect your installs and not, let, not allow you to get 100% coverage. So when we, when we talk about our moisture protection, we put a number with it. National Wood Flooring Association also states that anytime you install over a concrete substrate, you should do a moisture test. Now, there's only two moisture tests that are recognized by the National Wood Flooring Association. That is a calcium chloride test and a relative humidity test, okay? So the calcium chloride test, you know, anywhere below three pounds is, or I'm sorry, the calcium chloride test is made, is done in pounds. The relative humidity test is done in percentages. So anything below three pounds on a calcium chloride test says you don't need any kind of a moisture protection. For us, our top level of moisture protection and what we know to be a, a slab that is right before it's saturated is at 18 pounds. On the other side of the equation, when we're talking about relative humidity tests, the highest level that we'll go to and protect you up to is 95%. Anything over that is considered to be standing water or a saturated slab. So like I said before, we have one bucket, multiple different trials that can get you to your moisture protection. They're the two trials that come inside of the Bona R851 bucket are the 1250G trial and the MBP, which is the moisture barrier protection trial, right? The moisture barrier trial is gonna get you up to that 18 pounds, 95% RH, top level moisture protection at about 30 to 35 square feet a gallon, okay? If you remember though, I said that you can get that way with the 540 as well. If you do the 540, one coat, and then you use like the 1250G trial, which is the other trial that comes in the bucket, that'll also get you to 18 pounds at 95% RH. So either way you can do it, and it's one of those things that you gotta price it out. What's the, what's the time worth and, what's, and what, you know, what works best for your business? 1250G trial, is going to get you right in the middle. That's going to get you 12 pounds on a calcium chloride test or 85% on a relative humidity test at about 50 to 60 square feet a gallon. So the, the nice thing about the Bona 851, R851 is it's not an all or nothing. A lot of the moisture barrier adhesives out there are either 100% moisture protection or none. With us, we offer you something in the middle and that's right there, that 1250G trowel. That's where the majority of our floors live. Not, we barely, you know, I wouldn't say rarely, but not as often do we see those high moisture level floors. So why would you use, a, you know, get such a small spread rate with another adhesive when you could get covered with the 1250G trowel right there at 12 pounds and 85% relative humidity. This is gonna show you the difference between the moisture barrier trial and the regular 1250 trial. Moisture barrier trial, once again, that's how you can get to 18 pounds or 95% relative humidity. And we're just gonna want you to see the difference in the trial lines. So that's gonna be your standard 1250 trial. And that's gonna be your MVP trial. So as you can see, the difference is, is pretty drastic. There, it does put down a lot more adhesive, but that's gonna get you your top level moisture protection right there. This, this is gonna get you great moisture protection. This is, the, you know, this is 12 pounds, 85% relative humidity. So it's a really strong one. This is gonna get you your top level. Now I get, I get the question all the time of, do I have to do moisture testing, this and that? And you know, it's your business. You can do whatever you want. Best practices is you should do moisture testing so you know exactly what you're working with. If you're not gonna do it, you know, I say, go into a gunfight with a really big sword. 
at least cover yourself up to 12 pounds, 85% relative humidity. And let's say you need a little bit more, say you're falling in between, we can do something and get you, a, get you to 15 pounds or 87% relative humidity, which is the back trial method. Bob's gonna show you how that works right now. It's, it's essentially all you're gonna do is you're gonna take the flat end and you're gonna really drive that adhesive down into the substrate. And then you're gonna come back over the top with your normal trowel lines. And that'll build you up and give you three extra pounds or build you up to 87% relative humidity. So there is, a, there is a case if you do run into that little, into somewhere where you need just a, a little bit more adhesive, you can back trowel with a flat side that really drives the adhesive into the pores of the substrate and then just trowel it out normally. Well, what we really are looking for is this ridge height and this ridge stability. It, this adhesive has such a strong ridge stability that as you're, as you're installing, by the time you get from one side of the room all the way to the other side of the room, these ridges are still going to be up high. So if, you know, it doesn't have a slump. If that, if that adhesive slumps, then sometimes it's harder to get, to get transfer onto the boards as you get later in your installation. So with, this, with the Bone 851, the ridge stability is really high. It stands tall for a long time and, and allows those boards to be held down. The last point I want to make about this adhesive is something that we're really proud of. It's just that's just recently come about. This the R851 and the A50T are the only adhesives in the world that are Green Guard Gold certified. Green Guard Gold used to be um, for hospitals and ch child care facilities. Then they changed the name to Green Guard Gold. So putting down this adhesive not only protects the customer, protects the kids, the pets from off gas, zero, it's a zero VOC product, but it also helps the installer. You're not breathing in any of the, in the toxic gases or things like that anymore. It, like I said, the only Green Guard Gold certified adhesive in the world. One of the other things that's, that the RA51 has is it has its sound reduction properties built right in. So instead of using rubber mats or cork or any of those underlayments that sometimes you, you've used, you get, this, you get the sound rating with a standard 1250G trial right out of the bucket. Now our sound rating is second to none. It's a 71 on an IIC and a 65 on an STC. And if you know sound ratings, that's a, that's a really high one. Um, if you need those kind of documentations, reach out to your adhesive managers, they have all that information. So when we talk about dry times, it's a real important part of, real important aspect of the styling based adhesives. Our dry time right now out of the bucket is 60 minutes. So you have 60 minutes to work with it. But one of the great things about bone adhesives is if you'll notice all of them have that R in front of them, R851, R540, R850T, all that. The R stands for reactive. That means it reacts with water, moisture, Active, activates the adhesives faster. So when we talk about putting down adhesives, you can spritz it, you can mist it with a little bit of water, and you can take that open time from 60 minutes and cut it in half to 30. Now your open times do vary by region. If there's more humidity in the air, they will speed up a little bit. If there's more moisture in the floor, it will speed up a little bit. So they all react with the moisture. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna do a demo of we're going to put down some, some boards. We're going to put down some with no mist, so no water mist. And then we're going to water mist the, the other pile of adhesives and show you the difference in dry time and how, and how well they hold. So, Bob, if you want to go ahead, we're going to mist this front one right here. And when I say mist, I mean we're not putting a lot of moisture in there. You know, a couple different, just a couple mists like that. 1% water, that's all you want to do. If you put too much in there then you, and you've oversaturated, now you, you kind of do the opposite and you extend your open time. So what Bob's doing, this is, the, this is going to be a pile with no water. If you see, he's going to stir it around. If you just miss the top of these trial lines or whatever, then the reaction just starts on the top and you don't get that reaction throughout. If you stir around the, the water a little bit, then, you're, then you're, you're open time, or then you get more of the adhesive in the reaction. So this is just our standard 1250G trial. We're just gonna trial it out and we're gonna put some boards down and we're gonna come back every half an hour, test these boards and see how well they're in. Gonna mark the time right on here so we know when to start.
All right. And we'll come back and check back on those in the next half hour. All right, we're gonna do a pull test now on these 10. It's been th exactly 30 minutes. We're gonna pull these up. Remember, this is the side that was not water misted. Okay, so it's still coming up, but it's starting to stick really well. It's got a good transfer. This side was the one that was water misted with water. Mm. So that one still comes up, but it, that one was much harder than the first one. All right, we're on our next 30 minute test. This one again was the one that is just, just the adhesive all by itself. Came off, kind of hard. This is the one that's been spritz misted with water. That one's not coming off. So that one takes a hammer. With RA51, your open time is 60 minutes. If you spritz a little bit of water with it, it reacts faster with the water, that time can be cut in half. So just to sum it up, this Star 51 is an adhesive that has it all for you. It's got your sound rating, it's got your moisture protection, the clean ability, the elasticity, the really strong sheer strength, and it's easy to apply, doesn't, doesn't get on your hands, doesn't turn your hands and your tools black and, and have, all those, have all those caustic, nasty smells. It's a Green Guard Gold certified product, and it's, it, it can work on basically any installation you want. Now we're going to go uh, check out the 850T sausages. So Trey, let's talk about some of the features and benefits of the 880 and the 850T first. Absolutely. So the 850T is our, is our tube adhesive. We call it the sausages because we use an actual sausage maker to fill the tubes in, in North Carolina. But it's a real versatile kind of go everywhere adhesive. Now, one of the biggest reasons you use it is for nail glue assist. That's become very, very popular, very important in the, in the industry these days. Boards are not getting, they're not getting skinnier, they're getting wider, right? So when we look at, when we talk about nail glue assist, you think about, think about when you're putting down two and a quarter strip, right? This width. Think about one square foot. One square foot of two and a quarter strip maybe has 15, 17 nails in it, right? If you spread that out and you go to an eight inch wide, nine inch wide, now that, that same square foot has four to six mechanical fasteners. So with that reason, we gotta do a nail glue assist. You gotta be able to counterbalance the width of that board you want. You gotta hold down the same amount of floor, just now you're doing it with less mechanical fasteners. So the sausages are amazing for that. One of the things that, one of the things we, get, we talk about a lot is how do you do a proper nail glue assist? Now, I, there's no, the NWFA doesn't tell you exactly how you have to do it. We're not telling you how you have to do it. I'm just gonna give you a couple examples. Now, this is two of the most popular ones that we have. The one of the, of the guys do is you can do the zigzag pattern or you can do the one line pattern. Now, the benefit to the one line pattern, you're getting both of your, your butt, butt joints done but also now the whole entire side of this is gonna be held down. You don't wanna get it too close to the, to the groove side because you're gonna have your nails, the nails from the previous board are gonna be holding that side down. So this continuous line really will hold that board down nice, really well. Um, the zigzag pattern works great too. Just make sure that you're not getting too close. Once again, not getting too close to the groove side and make sure you're getting your butt joints really uh, held down as well because you don't have any nails there. Now, one of the big, one of the other major things that uh, people are doing these days with how wide boards are getting is they're doing a full trial with the nails. With the nails, so it's a kind of a glue down with a nail assist, but you can use a smaller notch trial, so you can extend your your adhesive. You're not using as much adhesive, but now you're getting a floor that, if a tornado comes through and takes a house out, you're gonna nothing's gonna be there but that floor because it's gonna be held down really, really well. The 850T is essentially the same, the same adhesive that's in the A51, the buckets. So it's made for wood floors. It's made for stair treads, risers, things like that. Now, when we talk about what a lot of guys are using, they're using some of these, you know, liquid nails, PL400, these, these other adhesives, these construction grade adhesives that they're trying to use 
under their floors. Now, these are great adhesives. I'm not, not knocking them, but they're not made for floors. If you remember back when we talked about the elasticity that we had in the 851, elasticity is going to allow that floor to expand, to contract, move it, and move it back. Construction adhesives don't have elasticity in them. So when they, when they dry and when they're solid, they crystallize. And when that floor moves, not if, when, it's gonna shear it off. And that's gonna break that bond and it's gonna snap. So with the, with the 850T, this built for, it's built for wood floors, that's, that's a much better product to use. Now, another one that we talked about before is some you know, face nailing, uh, repairs, stuff like that. This adhesive makes such a strong bond and such a nice, nice clean tool on a repair that you don't have to worry about the nails. You don't have to worry about the, the, tongue, being, the tongue being gone because you had to take out a board. One thing uh, you mentioned, you know, construction adhesives versus the A50T. Can you talk about the waste factor that you make it? Waste factor is a big deal. I'm, and I'm sure most of you know that when you put this in your cock gun and you, you take the pressure off even no matter what, it's still gonna leak, it's still gonna run, still gonna keep, keep rolling off. With the 850 T sausage, it stops. What we want you to do, take the pressure off, let it roll, let it run out just a little bit, just this little plug right here. You can pull this out, sometimes you need maybe a drywall screw or something just to puncture it, and you have all usable material. You don't lose anything. And in the end, this is what you're left with. All it is is the rolled up foil you're getting, once again, 99.9% .9 yield out of, that, out of that tube. So this tube right here turns into just this rolled up foil at the end when you use it all up. Great point, and uh, you know, what I've noticed in my years of contracting early using liquid nails, once, if you don't use that whole tube, what happens? You're gonna start curing out, it's gonna start, you're just gonna lose material eventually, and if it's a half or even a quarter left, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna turn into trash. That's going away. So when we, when we do load up these, these sausages, the 850T, there's two ways you can do it, right? You're gonna put it in, in here, and one thing you don't wanna do is you don't wanna take your knife and just cut the whole top off, because then it's gonna expand and it's gonna go all into the, you know, into the tip and it's gonna leak out the edges and get into the rings. A Couple things you can do, you can use like a Vaseline or some kind of, a, some kind of an oil right there, a silicone or something that keeps this this uh, lubricated because the problem is, as we talked about, um, you don't want to form, you don't want to lock this, this ring out. If you, if you do this and you cut it and it's coming out all in the ring, this, this ring is going to lock up and it's not going to be able to release. Uh, one of the things about all of our adhesives is they have a really, really strong bond with metals. So this metal right here will lock it up and it will not, it, you'll need vice grips to get it out. So two ways to, to, to open it up. One of them is just one puncture with a utility knife right next to the ring. You do, you do that and as it pushes up, it'll, it'll open up all this, this foil right here and it'll open like that. Another way and one of the ways I like the best is just like some flat nose snips and you just snip right below the, that silver ring and open it and you put it on and then you put your, your nozzle and your ring on the top there, screw it on and you're ready to go. And it'll just flow straight out of the, out of the white tube, the white tip, I mean. All right, good point. And then what, what about with the guns? Uh, do you have to kind of release that pressure? Does it continue to ooze out like some of the... Uh, if, if you keep the pressure on, it will continue to ooze, but, but as soon as you release that pressure, it will, it'll stop. And it'll, like, it, like I said on that one, it'll just leave that little plug there. And that's all you need for the next time you use it. You just take that, pull that plug out and you're ready to, ready to move again. All right, excellent, good points. Um, how wide of a bore? I mean, how, how wide are you see, seeing the bores get at, at this stage? It's, it's kind of the sky's the limit at this point in time with what we see out there. I just, we just saw some, some 20 inch wide, white oak, stuff like that. There's, there's a lot of these really super wide boards that if you are gonna, I mean, it would be, it's just, it's such a wide board that if you don't do a nail glue assist, you're gonna have movement, you're gonna have problems. The other thing that the nail glue assist does is, you know, it eliminates the squeaks, the pops, the creaks, the stuff that, that drives, you know, drives homeowners crazy. 
You know, a, a vast, vast majority of the callbacks that people are getting these days are due to squeaking, popping floors. And once again, you know, with the labor, the labor the way it is, and guys don't have time to go back and do those kind of repairs and don't want to do those, you know, those, those fill jobs and stuff like that, you can, you can virtually eliminate any chance of that by just doing the nail glue assist. Calls we get a lot is, uh, you know, after how wide would you go with the uh, nail glue assist? And I think you've mentioned NWFA. I don't know if they give recommendations or guidelines, but is it anything over four so, inches? So NWFA, NWFA sug suggests that anything over four inches, you do a nail glue assist. Also, you've got to be very careful and watch out because a lot of the pre-finished manufacturers these days are putting on their directions that they're requiring a nail a glue assist if you're doing anything over four inches. So just make sure you, that you're reading all the directions on those pre-finished floors because you might not be you might be out of warranty if you don't. Excellent, great points. And uh, can you finish uh, finish us off by talking about the R880? Let's talk about the R880. The 880 is this is an alpha silene. So like I said, all of our adhesives are silenes. Alpha silene just means that it has a stronger hold, a stronger shear strength, and a faster dry time. So, whereas the sausages, the dry time's about 40 minutes, this is 10. Much like the rest with the R in front of it, it reacts with the moisture. If you spritz water on the sausages, on the, on the 850T, it cuts, cuts it down to 20 minutes. If you spritz it on the 880, it'll cut it down to five minutes. It has a really strong, strong hold. It was originally made for vertical applications. And I think we're gonna demonstrate a little bit of a vertical application of it. But it works great for bull noses, T moldings, treads, risers, all those kind of things. Anywhere that you really want that adhesive to, glue, to dry fast, this is the one you need. So you make some great points about setting up faster. So that way, you know, most guys are taping off their bull nosing. I mean, even if, definitely if they're using liquid nails, but mm -hmm. if they're using a, um, even the, the 850T, maybe it takes a little bit longer to set up. Therefore, you don't want to be stepping on your transitional pieces or your bull nosings, mm -hmm. starter rows, setting up a lot faster. Starter rows are a great point. You know, if you're, even if you're doing just a full nail down, you put that, you, you put some of the 880 down, or I'm sorry, yeah, the 880, and you, mm -hmm. do, you do your starter row, spritz it with a little, a little water. You can come back, it's gonna hold so well. You don't need backer boards or any kind of top nails, and you can just start nailing right off there. All righty, well, let's get into a demonstration. If we can have Bobby come with our makeshift wall there. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, we'll show you two different ways. One with uh, some solid flooring. Well, it's engineered, but thick of solid. We're going to put a couple rows. Let's get that going there. Come on. There we go. All right. Thank you, Trey. <laughs> we're going to put a couple beads on the back of this uh, slat here. And then what we'll do, I'll release that pressure. We're going to install that. Give it a little tap with one of our tapping blocks so that we don't destroy our tongue. And then we'll move, move on to the next piece. Anything you'd like to add here, Trey, for our wall? You know, with the wall applications, it's, uh, it's one of those things with this adhesive that, you know, you always say measure twice, cut once. It's kind of measure tight twice, glue once, because once it holds, it's going to be on there. And it's, you know, like I said, it was originally, this was what it was originally designed for, was for wall applications. But, you know, with guys out in the field, all of a sudden they realized that it was, it was really working well on the floors. And it, was, it had such a good hold on the floors that, that they could do, you could do a lot of different things with it. It's very, really versatile. It's, it, you could use it for almost anything. now. It is a silent, so it will have trouble bonding and adhering to, to plastics. But any kind of your wood, your wood or your tile substrates, it'll hold like it'll hold no problem. All right, so we're back from uh, excellent uh, demonstrations that we had there on the bone adhesives, and uh, I'd like to thank Trey for uh, joining us in this uh, week's webinar. And uh, Bob and Trey, if you guys can tell me, what are some of the biggest takeaways from the uh, webinar today? You know, one of the things that, that I want you want everybody to take away is the simplicity of it. Um, there's a lot of liability in adhesives. There's a lot of products out there. There's tons of companies that have a lot of different products. One of the things, the greatest things about the Bona adhesives is we have three products and we can cover pretty much almost every scenario out there. So 
it's a pretty easy setup, pretty easy step by step, and uh, we get, we got you covered. Simple is always good. Bob, what would you say? Uh, the easy use in these products, uh, they won't beat you up when you're putting it down, uh, cleaning up off the floors. Uh, just so many great advantages of this product. I would definitely uh, give it a shot if you're not already using it. Excellent. Compared to some of the, uh, you know, what do you call it, subfloor adhesives, the crystallization of those, I mean, that's one thing that amazed me, just the flexibility of the adhesive that allows the wood to, you know, naturally move and, uh, uh, and then ease spread. I definitely like how easy the adhesive spread, you know, based on some urethane adhesives, so. You know, if, and if you do have any other questions, anything you guys that we didn't answer today, reach out to your uh, regional adhesive manager. Um, we're always here to help and we're, this, is, this is what we like to do. Uh, be sure to check out videos just like these on our uh, Bona Professional YouTube channel. Also, you know, if you're in the podcast, I highly recommend uh, the podcast On the Floors with Wayne and Rob. Also, uh, don't forget you can register on the Bona website for our three-day stand and finish schools. And anytime you want to reach the tech and training department, we're always available from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Or you can always send us an email at ustech at bona.com. This wraps up our webinar for today, and we look forward to seeing you on the next webinar.